Okay, hello everybody. Um, my name is Chris Hurt and uh, I have here Mark Durden with me and we would love to uh, show you a new piece of technology that the Keyman team has developed. It's called the Keyman app user testing bot. I think I got that right. And uh, uh, yeah, we're just uh, kind of excited to, to show off this little um, development that, that's really improving the, the process of the Keyman team. And uh, so Mark's got a number of different things that he's going to show us. But Mark, could you tell us, well, first, go ahead and introduce yourself just for a minute. Yeah, so I'm Mark Durden. I'm the team lead for the Keyman project. Uh, we're a fully remote team, so we work in about four different countries right now. And that seems to just keep on growing. Um, we have a, a, a tester in Cambodia who does a lot of testing, uh, user testing for us. Uh, and I'm based in Australia right now. So, um, Chris, you happy if I go ahead and give a little bit of background on, on what, where yeah, we go so, with Keyman? You know, I think most of the people here uh, have heard of, uh, you know, testing software um, for developers. We know about unit testing and end-to-end -end testing and all these different ways of automatically testing your software. But uh, then there's sort of the the user manual testing. Can you tell us like, how does that fit into your workflow? What does that mean? Yeah, so so Keyman, um, we have to do quite a bit of manual testing with Keyman because Keyman is a keyboard app. So really to make sure that the keyboard is working as the user would expect, we need to use it to test it. There's only so far we can go with automated testing. Now, to make that even more complex, we run on six different platforms and we have to integrate with every single application on all of those platforms. And of course, those applications have numerous assumptions about languages, many of which are probably not good assumptions. And so we have to do a lot of, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't look right kind of testing, which is very hard to pick up in automated test. Right, so in, a, in sort of classical, um software development you're trying to automate as much of this as you can but in your context you just really you can't automate everything it's not practical right. or reasonable and to yeah. compound that with you've got different multipliers right you've got operating systems and number of keyboards and you know just on yeah, and on that's right that's right So how do you keep track of all this well i think that's what we're here to talk about <laughs> Yeah, so um, it was our, our testing process was pretty crazy. Uh, so for the developers, it was hard for them to consistently document what sort of testing was needed, where that should be done. Um, and once the testing had been completed, it was a pretty manual process to go through and check to make sure that, oh yeah, everything had passed. Uh, for the testers, uh, it was pretty hard for them to figure out, well, what actually needs testing? And then when looking at a, a single work item, a pull request in GitHub, uh, it's often difficult to know, well, what state is this pull request in? Is it ready for testing? Uh, how to, you know, have they responded to the tests that have gone wrong and things like that. And for me, I really had very little visibility as the team lead as to, you know, where things are at with testing and what, you know, what level of, of user testing are we actually getting on all the different a piece of code that we're pushing through. Right. So you needed, you needed like visibility as a manager to be able to make informed decisions and yeah, you, and sure. your testers needed to know, well, how, what do I pick up next and what should I do once I pick it up? And yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you've built something, a bot, so to speak, that automates the process around human testing. That's right. So right. I don't want to say I, I started off looking for existing solutions and I dug in a variety of different places and found a number of different products out there. There's a lot of them. Uh, the big problem we had was they all required us to change the way we work quite dramatically. Mm. So we have a very GitHub centric workflow. We use pull requests uh, for all code changes. Uh, and we work a lot within issues and pull requests in GitHub and very little elsewhere. Right. So whatever, I, whatever I wanted to implement, I wanted it to fit into that space 
without getting in the way. Mm. So the pull request is the core of your development process. And you are just like bringing this, this user testing, a well, human process into the pull request itself and hooking in uh, to all of the existing sort of status check, you know, commenting in GitHub. So it's all centrally sort of packaged together around Correct. code change. That's right. It's brilliant. And one of the, the big things that I was looking to do was to try and eliminate busy work because that was the, the biggest flag that we had was there's a lot of copy and pasting and manually summarizing test results and going through and scanning to find out where things were, were at. So uh, the bot that I have come up with uh, tries to automate all of that busy work as far as we can. And it tries to encourage a structure for writing tests and results so you get the instant feedback if you've done the wrong structure because the bot will say, hey, that doesn't make sense to me. Mm. And yeah, it fits straight into our workflow. So it's a GitHub app, which means that it sits on a server, receives a webhook notification whenever there's a change to a pull request or an issue or a new commit on it. And it will go through and look at the state of that pull request, look at every comment on the pull request and assess what the current state of testing is and then update the results of that. Um, and I can give you a little demo on how that works if you like. Oh yeah, the, so I'm super excited to like see how this works in the real world. So why don't you go and just show us how how this looks as a, as a real world example in an actual Keyman uh, pull request. So that's my, my screen. This is a pull request I created a couple of days ago. Ooh. 21 days ago. Gosh, it's been open for a while. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just have a little uh, heading here, user testing. As soon as the bot sees that, the bot gets all excited and says, oh, I can do something with this. It looks at the, uh, the content that follows that user testing heading in that comment. And it looks for, flat, for little identifiers, test underscore something or other. And so I've got a, a test for test windows. I've got test for Mac, a test for other doesn't really matter about what this pull request is about. We're really just looking at what the tests are here. And I've got some, as you can see, some detailed instructions on what you should do for the test in order to complete it. Okay. So the bot goes and assembles all of that. This is all very human readable, which is important to us as well. But you know, it's not some sort of arcane um, XML or something that is easy yeah. for the bot to understand, but painful for yeah. us. The idea is we work in Markdown, which bots and humans both love and uh, we can get a lot done there. So the bot reads all of that and it goes and assembles it and puts it into a, a summary into the user test results. Now this is all passed here because it's already been, the testing's already been done. So yeah. there's a couple of things you can see here. One is you can see the whole history at any time just using the existing functionality of GitHub. So you can see every time testing is done, you can go back and look at what happened each time. Mm. The bot added a, a flag initially saying that there was some user tests required. Now, if we scroll further down, we'll see that that user test required has disappeared again because all the testing has been done. So it's picked up those four uh, different test identifiers. And we can see here some content that actually comes from further down from comments that have been made. So if we scroll down here, we see that, that our tester here, Makara, has um, actually told us that he can't start the testing and he's raised a new issue about that. Right. So all the testing was blocked. And then at that point, if I actually go here, I reckon I can probably see that. I'm not sure. Oh, which wow. I didn't even know you could go and look at the <laughs> revision yeah, so history. Can, <laughs> yeah. So there you go. You can see blocked and you can see it says C5648 notes. So it's actually picked up that the uh, testing didn't work out. It's given me that little comment, which is exactly this comment here that Makara's put in. Okay. And the, the notes is just going to be the additional content under there. Okay. So then at that point, the, the bot says, hey, all the testing has been completed. Yeah, it went wrong, but uh, from the tester's point of view, they can't do anything else. So we remove the label. And then I, 
told him to retest and now this is where we see reality where I, oh you should retest it because I fixed it over there and he goes he says no actually we're still blocked oh man so you go back and, and forth in this um you know right. human process comment I think it's working now push some code retest mm -hmm. and the bot yeah. is facilitating the updating the status of whether tests are passing or not and the tester That's is right. then inputting real you know results as they do the test and that updates the, the bot takes care of updating the status yeah so you can see two things here one i added that that was my comment saying command app test bot retest yeah and i just want them to retest everything which then added that label back which meant that makara knew that it was ready for retesting Got so it. he went through and, and retested and then then the bot says, okay, you've done the testing, take yeah. it away again. And then we went on and on and on and on with <laughs> block, block, block. And it was all yeah. quite embarrassingly bad, but eventually we got to the point where we had some passed and we had one failed. And this one was, he marked it as blocked because he felt like the instructions were wrong, which they were because it wasn't a seven. It should have been a one in the instructions. <laughs> yeah. I actually went and edited the instructions. And then I said, we want to retest just those two in this okay. case. So you're giving instructions to the bot through your comment, which um, that's right, which uh, sort of narrows down what should be retested there. Correct. And yep. the, so the then, user testing label, use, or user test required label, I and mean, that's critical for finding these things in the first place, right? Because that's the way that testers filter their issues is to find yep. things with the user testing required label. So you can see here, I've got that user test required label in the in the search, or you can see it in the in there. It's probably easier. Yeah. Uh, and right now we actually have one test, which is user test required. Okay. So that's in a, in a good state for our team. I think there was six or seven this morning. So yeah, our testers right have on. been doing some work. And we're down just to one. Fantastic. Probably not so in small part due to the bot. <laughs> Well, I think the bot makes it a lot easier. That's that's what I, I believe. Yeah. So we keep on going. He's got one pass, one failed with a whole bunch of notes on why it went wrong. Uh, I fixed an issue and then it's only one to retest the UI one, which went fa failed and request user test required again. The bot goes and removes it because it all passed. Yeah. Everything looks okay. So that's kind of the process. That's particularly ugly in terms of the back and forth, but as you can see, it gets tracks it pretty well. So it makes it really easy for you to actually see what's going on. You can see all the, the necessary history without being uh, overwhelmed with lots of noise, which is un, which is irrelevant. So if we go back to this, this comment is only ever updated. It never makes more than one comment with the with the test results. Right. So you can always just look for those user test results to. Um, see what the status of the testing is there's a couple of other little bits and pieces so if i look at the checks here i've got a user testing check it says four tests passed of four if i click the details that just drops me up to that comment and i can see yeah. those details there yeah and those status checks i mean that's an integral part of the github pull request so the fact that you've made the keyman app test bot report into the status checks as well I mean, that's critical because that'll that'll block merging that will, you know, you can see that in other other ways yeah. through GitHub. So that's correct. Now, you can also see if I click past here, it's going to take me to the the comment where the last comment where it was where it was passed. Mm. OK, well, thanks, Mark, for showing us kind of that overview of the Keyman app user testing bot. And um, yeah, so let's just wrap things up right now and then we'll have another video to get more in depth with how you actually write tests. So thanks for watching. Thanks again, Mark, for uh, your time. You're very welcome.